Hey y'all, it's Bennett, and it's time to talk about my pickups from the Southern Fried Gaming Expo. That was F S F G E in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, in the middle of August, and uh, yeah, it was a great time. When it says Gaming Expo, as opposed to Game Expo, uh, it, that's a that's a really fine distinction as far as other uh, conventions go. Whereas Southeast Game Exchange was all about buying and selling games, adding to your collection and all that stuff. Uh, Southern Fried was a gaming expo, so it meant get in there and play some games. And it also meant more than just video games. We had loads and loads of tabletop games as well, uh, like role-playing games, war games, uh, miniatures, and then there were also computer games and um, a humongous free-to-play arcade uh, with, I think they said the number was like 350 pinball and arcade games to go in and play all you want, and a giant room full of um, console games from like the the you know earliest Atari and similar kind of things to all the way up to PS5 they had a little bit of everything um all lined up and ready to play so I had a great time and checking out a bunch of different games and uh, playing uh, on the Famicom and playing on the TurboGrafx-16 and here's the badge, by the way. Here's the SFGE uh, lanyard. But yeah, I played on a Saturn and I played uh, some pinball. Uh, I got to play the Nightmare on Elm Street pinball game for the first time since uh, I was in college when they had one at our, uh, at the CC's Pizza where I went to school, um, which was the, you know, all you can eat pizza buffet for five ninety nine or whatever it was. Um, and they had the Nightmare on Elm Street pinball in the back of CC's at that one. But anyway, so I got to play that again. Got to play the Terminator 2 pinball for the first time in ages. Uh, lots of that great stuff. And I played on some candy cabs. Maybe they were, were they Capcom, you know, CPS arcade systems? I don't know. I'm going to have to look into that. But um, they had loads of those kind of shorter um, white arcade setups that didn't have marquee art everywhere and it just had um, whether they were emulators or the original boards I don't know but had a bunch of those games on there like I played Alien vs Predator from beginning to end and uh, had a ball and played uh, another, another uh, like a vertical shooter the name of which escapes me right now but uh, several levels of that uh, and they had other games set up with like the the all the all the great arcade games of the 90s they had loads of Street Fighter and similar <sighs> yeah tons and tons of arcade games to play, to play tons of consoles so much fun just getting out there and playing games with fellow gamers and you know my daughter played her first pinball game and uh, she enjoyed that and she played some arcade games too and my wife did too and they, they had a ball so great time uh, but you know what do we do here we go looking for games to add to the collection and while they didn't have the uh, enormous range of vendors like Siege did um, before uh, the, the, the SFGE had a few vendors to, to pick from as far as uh, video game stuff goes and so of course I took a look at pretty much everything. Uh, it was funny one of the vendors they had was literally uh, like the same booth that was at uh, Siege so it was um, something I <laughs> recognized my wife recognized and they had a lot of Japanese games and systems and stuff as well as American stuff. Did I buy anything from that one? I'm not sure. I don't think I did. They were a little overpriced as they were at Siege. Whatever. Uh, but here we go. Let's just go ahead and knock out what I picked up. 
Okay, on the, the first things I got were at one um, booth that had some like um, handmade uh, art and like video game art and um, uh, necklaces and 3D printed um, game stands and all sorts of stuff like that. And they had a few games for sale and so I picked up new copies of Killer Instinct, Killer Instinct, pardon me, Killer Queen Black on the Switch and Heroes of Ruin on the 3DS. Uh, Killer Queen Black I have not yet played. Um, I understand it is, you know, arcade fun and um, I'm gonna keep this one sealed not because it's valuable or anything, I just kind of, I picked it up just to to have on the shelf but I already have the um, the downloaded version, I think they had it for a, do a dollar or two at, uh, on the sale one time and I, I picked it up. So I haven't played it yet, but I already, I already have it on digital, so I'll just put this on the shelf. Um, but I'm glad to, be, glad to pick that up. And then uh, Heroes of Ruin is, um, as I understand it, kind of uh, Diablo style from uh, Square Enix on the 3DS. And, you know, that's, a, that's something that I can see myself when I, when my daughter has the Switch and I'm looking to play some handheld stuff, um, running around on 3DS, uh, hacking and slashing in Heroes of Ruin, uh, sounds like fun to me. So I am going to open this up and give it a play. Uh, yep. And I think, uh, I got this for the pair for 40 total. I think it was like 25 and 15, 25, 15, something like that. Brand new. Good to go. Uh, up next. Uh, oh, that booth, by the way, did have other some other cool games, some like higher end stuff, um, including a copy of um, Haunting Ground, I think, and it, they wanted it was like four hundred bucks, uh, and of course, you know, I was like, is there any way I could justify getting uh, a four hundred dollar PS2 game? And uh, I guess fortunately, I came to my senses and, and didn't uh, get it, but it was cool to see it there at the show. Okay, moving on. Um, there was another booth that was probably the, the largest games vendor in, in the place, except maybe the, the one that all, had all the Japanese games, but um, this one had uh, a little bit of everything, a lot of the, like, everything from loose Nintendo games to, uh, like, for NES, to, like, PlayStation 3, 4, uh, Switch, Xbox 360, a little bit of everything, and then they had um, some cases that had the kind of more valuable stuff in the glass case. And so I flipped through the regular stuff and looked all, all over the stuff in the glass case and pondered and thought about it for a long time. And finally, um, here's what all I picked up. Uh, this of course is the original Luigi's Mansion. I did not ever have, I didn't have a copy of this uh, in the collection. And here's the, it's the black box version with game manual all intact. Uh, so definitely happy to add that to the collection. And this is Robocop for the Xbox. I have no idea if this is any good, but I like Robocop and I was just in the mood for to pick up a um uh, uh something where I can you know shoot a lot of things as my man Robocop here so uh you know he's part man part machine all cop is that how that went and we're ready to give him a go on the original Xbox so it works for me um we'll give it a try and see how it is and this was <laughs> Not the greatest buy in the world, but it's it's something I wanted to add to the collection. Of course, it was Madden 64. This is the first John Madden football on the Nintendo 64. And it's also probably, I would say, the worst John Madden football on the Nintendo 64, but that's fine. Uh, it's This is a game that I played a lot when, when it first came out. I was, you know, a big Madden fan from the 16-bit era, and when I had my N64, I was looking at those PS1 people with their Madden games and their NFL game day and other stuff like that. And I was like, come on, let's get Madden up on some Nintendo 64, please. 
And then when they came out, of course, I rushed out and got it. And I remember uh, <laughs> playing against my cousin uh, when we were in, in college, and, and that was a lot of fun. We had a, uh, we had some great rivalries. Um, and uh, I remember one time he uh, beat me on a, um, uh, a last second uh, uh, halfback pass from Jerome Bettis uh, from the Steelers launched it over the top of me. I didn't see the halfback pass coming at all and he, he took me down uh, and I was so mad. Um, and then there was also the time when uh, I beat him. He was using the um, Panthers and um, I made him a fumble with their uh, running back Tamunga Biaka Batuka, if you remember that guy. And uh, my cousin Jimmy was you know, coughed up the ball and he threw down his controller. Man, Batuka sucks! In his sort of way. And it cracked us the heck up. So, yep, good times contained in this box. Uh, of course, it's mostly just going to sit on the shelf because who wants to play Madden 64? I mean, we've got uh, all the other Madden options out there, but I'll give it a go and remember the good old days. All right, and then... I got, this one was the big purchase of the day, uh, Zombies Ate My Neighbors for the Super Nintendo. Um, the box has a little bit of wear, I mean it's torn off right there, so that's, you know, more than just a little bit of wear. So I was disappointed to see that, but and there's sticker residue there, and I think I can kind of get most of that off, but yeah, disappointed to see that tear there, but um, otherwise it's complete, you know, manual and game, and uh, this is one I've always wanted to have in the collection, and this wasn't the greatest price in the universe, but it was pretty much kind of what, what one would expect to pay for it. And so now it's in the collection. Um, and it's funny, this label here, it's another, much like I saw at Siege, somebody was using the um, meat label gun from a grocery store. Um, and so I'm pretty sure what we got going on here, because the, the guy behind the counter said that the collection in that one case with all the ones that said meat on it, he said, that's, you know, I'm selling these for a friend of mine. And so I'm 99% sure that this is the same dude that I bought my, um, uh, my Mario paint from at uh, Siege, because he, you know, had that neat label gun. And who else would do that? So anyway... Um, yep, so I got that for whatever that says there, and, uh, adding that to collection, I'm looking forward to actually getting to play it. Um, I mean, so, yep, Zombies Ate My Neighbors for the Super Nintendo. And finally, like, I, I tried to see if that was, if they could do anything on price, and the guy was like, eh, I can take, you know, ten bucks off the, off the total, but otherwise, I mean, they're all priced the way we want them to, so. Okay, so... I said, well, how about instead of taking the 10 bucks up <laughs> off, how about you throw in Shaq Fu, The Legend Reborn for the Switch? And he said, sure, why not? So got all those games from that one guy and Shaq Fu uh, on the Switch uh, added on top. So yep, y'all know about some Shaq Fu. This is more beat em up than Fighter. Uh, the Super Nintendo version was, was Fighter was a fighter, but, um, yep. Who doesn't love Shaq? So, yeah, apparently this game is not so great. Um, uh, but also maybe it's not as bad as the original game was, so I'm looking forward to giving it a try. Uh, yep, especially to get it for, you know, thrown in with the rest of the things I was going to buy. All right, one more little, uh, purchase I made. from one of the other vendors. Uh, he had not nearly as many games as the, the the one guy that I got like Shaq Fu and Zombies Ate My Neighbors from. Um, but, a, you know, a decent amount to look over. Uh, nothing that really struck my fancy except some like sealed copies of 3DS games like, the, like one of the Adventure Time games and that kind of thing. Nothing great, but Okay, uh, still nothing that I was going to buy, um, except I glanced down at a cardboard box he had 
you know, Nintendo on the floor in front of the, the booth. Uh, and it was full of sports games and that sort of a thing. And um, I asked, you know, what the what the prices were on on games in there because they didn't they weren't labeled. And he's like, yeah, five a piece. So um, that worked out for me because well, I'll show you what I got for there. But um, uh, for five a piece, I got three hundred for the PSP. That's Rise to glory, march to glory, 300, march to glory. I have no idea this is any good. Uh, it just, it was in there for, for five, and uh, I am all about some, if I, I assume, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is kind of like a Dynasty Warriors sort of thing, where you're, you know, going up against hordes of uh, enemies and hacking and slashing, so fine by me, and always add, glad to add to the PSP collection. So that was five. And also for five, we had Spider-Man Web of Shadows for the regular Nintendo DS. This was, I knew this was a pretty good deal too for five dollars. Um, and yep, good, glad to add it to the DS collection. Didn't have it and you know, now it did. Does it have a manual? Maybe, I think so. So complete five bucks. That's a good a good price for that. Uh, and finally, the thing that caught my attention and made me want to go through the rest of the little bin there, and why I asked about the prices was I caught this one NCAA football eleven for the PS2. Uh, now this one, much like NCAA fourteen for the PS3 and three and Xbox three hundred and sixty being, you know, the last college football game for those systems, NCAA 11 is the last one for the PS2. And so the version of 11 on PS3 is not really worth, you know, much of anything. But this one goes for 35 or $40 or so, and uh, I will have no problem um, going ahead and trying to eBay this off to somebody else so that I can pay myself back for some of what I spent at Southern Pride. So yeah, this was a great find for five dollars. Um, this is one of those, you know, sports games to be on the lookout for and uh, I found it. And the guy, I, I didn't bring it to the guy's attention, hey look, this one's worth money. Um, but I also, you know, I also, I don't know, I don't know if he had any idea that this was worth any more than the other random sports games that were in there. So. Um, anyway, it's not like it's worth $150, but it's uh, a really good uh, pickup for five. And it's going to defray some of the cost. So, yes, a great time at Southern Fried Game Expo. And I'm looking forward to going again, hopefully next year. Play me some more arcade games and uh, maybe pick up some more stuff for the collection. And I'll bring you along with me, as always. Thanks for watching. If you like this, go ahead and like it. Why not? And if you haven't subscribed, that would be super awesome if you want to do that. And I'll keep pumping out this content for you because I know you're just like me and you like looking at video games. Thanks for watching. Bye.